リスマスといえばチキンチキンといえばクリスマス What the hell? チキンのないクリスマスなんてお餅のないお正月と一緒じゃないかクリスマス and chicken? Chicken and Christmas? Are you out of your damn mind? Why? Christmas, everyone. I am the Kaiju no Kami from the Toku Animation News Network, and today I'm celebrating Christmas by taking a look at Kaito Sentai Lupin Ranger versus Keisatsu Sentai Pot Ranger, commonly known as Lupot by the fandom. As with every Sentai series that is nearing completion, rumors began to swirl about what Q Ranger's successor would be based on. It was then that an interesting concept came to notion, which ended up being far more intriguing than what we actually got. These rumors suggested that the next series was going to be a cops versus robbers type scenario with two Ranger teams, and that each episode was going to alternate back and forth on which team would be featured in that episode, with them combining forces for the final third of the show. It sounded very interesting and had the makings of becoming a top tier Sentai show. Unfortunately, while the versus aspect was true, the execution was not. Instead of the Lupin Rangers, based on the French thief, Arsène Lupin, being the stars in every odd-numbered episode, with the Pot Rangers being the focus of the even-numbered ones, or vice versa, both teams were pretty much featured concurrently. Toho also hired Junko Komura to helm the show, who had already given us the pretty dull and boring Juoger. Did Komura learn from her mistakes of Juoger? Or is Lupot just another soulless, dulled experience? Watch to find out. The Heroes. Instead of Good Rangers versus Evil Rangers, we've got Good Rangers fighting... Gooder? Rangers? Something like that. First up, let's talk about our Phantom Thieves. <laughs> Wrong Phantom Thieves. <laughs> Security's already tight. We haven't even sent our calling card yet. You're on the right track, but still kind of wrong. There we go. They are ultimately the ones that matter the most as the show ends up sidelining the Pot Rangers often in the second half. They are Kairi Yano, Toma Yomachi, and Umeka Hayami. About a year or so before the show's premiere, Kairi's brother, Toma's fiance, and Umeka's childhood friend were frozen in ice and presumably died when their ice prisons shattered. This led to a strange old man named Kogure making an offer to this trio that they could not refuse. Long ago, the villains of this series, known as the Ganglers, broke into Arsène Lupin's private collection and whisked away many of his prized treasures, killing the gentleman thief in the process, all of which would grant the Ganglers various abilities depending on the item. Kogure has been tasked with retrieving the lost items, but is unable to do so on his own. He informs our lament trio that acquiring all of the items will allow them to bring back their loved ones. They agree to become Lupin Rangers under the notion that they will do anything to get the items back, even if they have to sacrifice one another to do so. Obviously, we the audience knows that isn't going to happen, and we watch as their camaraderie grows over time to the point where they will never abandon each other. They are given a set of guns and plane devices with dials on them to transform into the Lupin Rangers. 
回答チェンジ Additionally, the planes act as an unlocking mechanism to open the safes that the ganglers have attached to their bodies containing the Lupin collection piece. A cool thing to note is that many of the Lupin pieces are repainted gear from past Ranger series. After accepting Kogure's proposal, our trio takes up jobs at a French restaurant that acts as a front for their operation. It also helps that Toma was a cook beforehand, so he does the big task while Kairi and Umika act as servers and clean up. Kairi's brother raised him for most of his life and was an amazing basketball player, so Kairi strived to be one too. Sadly, Kairi never felt he could live up to his brother's shadow and quit the team, which resulted in an argument between the two just moments before his brother's disappearance. Kairi is in a weird place where he really wants to save his brother while falling in love with his job as a phantom thief because it's what he's good at. <laughs> He also disdains the Red Ranger of the Potch Rangers, for he reminds him of his brother too. Umika dropped out of high school and left home against her dad's wishes, as seen in an episode where her dad visits her. Individually, they don't have the most development compared to the teams of the past. Nevertheless, it is when they are together where they shine the most. I do want to say I really like their costume designs between the capes and the colored visors that resemble top hats. Lastly, they are played by Asahi Ito, Shoko Hama, and Haruka Kudo. <laughs> Yoichi Nukumizu portrays Kogure. The Pot Rangers are the least interesting of the duo as they are just cops who do cop things. Well, fantasy cop things as they actually save people and arrest criminals compared to what real cops do. They are Keiichiro Asaka, Saku Yahikawa, and Tsukasa Myojin. Keiichiro and Tsukasa joined the Global Special Police Organization early on in their lives and learned a lot from a third partner who left them to go to their main headquarters situated in France. This led to Sakuya joining them, who is the rookie of the trio, meaning he is the comic relief character for the show. Fortunately, Sakuya is an excellent marksman even if he does lack confidence from time to time, which Ryo Yokohama plays up quite well. Deichiro, on the other hand, is very hot-headed, rushing into various situations without thinking. He is also very oblivious to the obvious, as was the case with the woman who was in love with him.
Personally, I think you're a fucking idiot. Then again, you could say the same for Sakia, as both he and Umika clearly have feelings for one another, but the other is too afraid to admit it, such given their situations. Koise Yuki does a fine job as Kiichiro, even if he isn't given too much to work with considering he's akin to the more stoic Red Rangers from the early days of Sentai. Interestingly, Sakasa's motivations to become a police officer revolved around her grandpa being one, while actress Kazusa Okayama's actual dad was a policeman. Sakasa also has an obsession with things she finds cute. At the start of the show, these officers are giving an artificial set of guns based on the Lupin Collection ones that allow them to transform into the Pot Rangers. Their suits look like police uniforms with ties on them, while the helmet visors look like a police cap. They end up discovering the restaurant Kyrie and gang work at and become repeat customers as they love their cooking and company. <laughs> It makes situations awkward for our Lupin Rangers, though they will often use this to their advantage. The Pot Rangers will outright destroy a gangler without a care as to whether or not the Lupin piece is retrieved beforehand. It is interesting to see the two teams play off each other. have their own snacks. What is this? Scooby-Doo? The Pot Rangers commander is Samuel Hilltop, who looks a lot like Eddie Murphy. <laughs> Oh, no. Iki Nawala's talents are highly underutilized here as he doesn't do much of anything, but that might be for the better as the man was more recently charged for sexually assaulting a minor. What the fuck is this piece of shit? In addition to Hilltop, the Pot Rangers are also assisted by a robot that is named Jim Carter for some reason. Most people may recognize voice actress Ryo Kukumiya for her roles as Al Elric in Full Metal Alchemist and Happy in Fairy Tale. Jim, the final ranger is the double agent, Noel Takao, played by Seiya Matoki. Noel came to Japan in order to help collect the remaining pieces of the Lupin collection while also taking down the ganglers. He consistently plays both sides while helping them at the same time, for he is the one who provided the Pot Rangers with their transformation devices. It just depends on what plot is in play. The concept behind a double agent is an interesting one, and I like that he has different fighting styles depending on which ranger form he undertakes. When he is Lupin X, he is silver and focuses a lot on parkour and melee attacks, which helps him open up gangler safes to steal their treasure. <laughs> Seven, 
as Patron X, he dons a gold suit with a wide array of range attacks via a gun. <laughs> Unfortunately, the show never really seems to know what it exactly wants to do with Noel, leaving him back into an underdone potato. He's kind of just there, and kind of ends up disrupting the dynamic the show had going for it between the three Lupin Rangers and three Potch Rangers. There are a couple of pseudo upgrades that do occur over the course of the series. There's a little sentient jet-like machine bot named Goody Striker that shows up to help out whichever Ranger team he feels is in need of his assistance at the time. <laughs> He is voiced by Yuji Mitsuya. When he works with the Pot Rangers, the trio merge into one being to fire off a final attack. When he joins with the Lupin Rangers, Lupin Red multiplies three times. Lupin Red also acquires a special attack that lets him see a monster's movements in the future. X gains a launcher on his shoulders. <laughs> the villains. <laughs> Do you remember how boring I found the villains in Jewelger to be? Well, the ganglers are even worse. I feel like the ganglers were only there because Toei was too afraid to make the Lupin Rangers be the actual villains of the show. It's kind of weird. They have no problem with having a Kamen Rider show entirely focused on good Kamen Riders fighting bad Kamen Riders with no monsters at all, but heaven forbid they do the same with Sentai. So instead of having a show where we legitimately have an evil Sentai team fighting a good Sentai team, it's a hero Sentai team and an anti-hero Sentai team always fighting against a centralized threat. Worse, the threat is pretty much just there to give a reason for the two teams to put their differences aside and work together from time to time. The ganglers are just so damn boring. At the beginning of the show, we learn that the leader of the ganglers, the thousand-year-old gangster Degronio Yaboon, wants to retire and offers up a contest for anyone who can conquer the human world to become his successor. <laughs> He sounds like an interesting fella, only for nothing to come out of it. He sits around and barely does a thing. He's pretty much just Genus 2.0. The most notable piece about DeGranio is his voice actor, Mitsuru Miyamoto, who was the voice of Roger Smith in The Big O and was the Japanese voice for Simba in The Lion King. <laughs> DeGranio only has one moment in the earlier half of the show where he actually goes outside and then sits around and mopes until the tail end. The safe on his chest allows him to capture and utilize any of the loop on pieces, which is also surrounded by chains that cannot be moved unless he says so. <laughs> <laughs> His second in command is a grenade looking cyclops by the name of Destra Maggio. Destra is a big, hulking brute who wields a hammer and tends to give our heroes a run for their money when he faces off against them. He is completely loyal to DeGranio and really wants to serve him and only him rather than become the new boss. Destro is voiced by Yuji Ueda. Ueda has been doing anime since the early 90s. He was Sundosuke and Rurouni Kenshin, the Japanese equivalent to Brock in Pokemon, and most of all, being Lord Raptor in the Darkstalkers franchise. <laughs> Fugai nasa de awasiru kaugana 
Dextra Moonlight says the shells provide her for giant monsters when there are no monsters of the week available for the rangers to use their mechs against. Yay! When there are monsters for the rangers to battle, the medical advisor Goshru Mado is there to make a down gangler grow as long as its safe is still intact. Anime star Ayana Takatasu voices Gauch, who has been featured in the likes of High School of the Dead, Queen's Blade, and the Data Live series. Gauch seems to enjoy BDSM as she gets her kinks by experimenting with ganglers, making them more powerful. You could say she uses a variety of safe words. Oh, come on! Our final main player of the show is the one who is the sole purpose as to why the Lupin Rangers exist, and that is Zamigo Delma. Zamigo is a cold hearted bastard who spirits away people after turning them into popsicles. He dresses like a Mexican cowboy and shoots guns. <laughs> Unfortunately, for being the catalyst for the Lupin Rangers, he barely does much of anything in the show. He only appears in a handful of episodes, even after he is properly introduced in episode 10. If you want to talk about one of the most wasted villains in Sentai history, Zamigo breaks that ice. The only thing great about him is the number of ice puns you can use with this guy, but even the humor of those thaws over time. In this universe, there's only one absolute everything. Freezes. You are not sending me to the cooler. What killed the dinosaurs? The Ice Age! Cool party. The blood will freeze in my hands. I will turn Gotham into an icy graveyard. Then I will pull Batman's heart from his body and feel it freeze in the hands. Actor Jingi Ire's performance will not melt your heartstrings as he is as useless as useless gets. It seems like Komura wanted Zamigo to be the next Bosco or Juzo, but forgot to include him in the show. <laughs> Then suddenly, at the end, we're supposed to care about this character or something? The weekly ganglers are really no different. There are a couple of really cool looking ones from a design perspective. Aside from those, they're as basic as basic can be. <laughs> Of course there's a farting monster. Why wouldn't there be? I like the idea of the ganglers, but none of them hold a candle to the Lundars family of Time Ranger, which is all I really kept thinking about as the show progressed. The grunts are called Portermen. The best thing about the Portermen is when they are able to grow. <laughs> the Mecha. There's a lot of Mecha in this show, especially when you count the auxiliary mechs and 
they kind of suck. Basically, the little vehicle devices our ranger teams have to transform become their mecha. The Lupon rangers specialize in air vehicles called dial fighters, while the Potch rangers trigger machines are car based. The aforementioned Goody Striker has the ability to grow large, and he will act as the main body to whichever team he has decided to join up with for that battle. His combined form will either be Lupon Kaiser or Pot Kaiser, both of whom are so-so when it comes to the overall design. If I had to pick a favorite between the two, it would be Lupin Kaiser for him having the ability to fly. There was one episode where they kind of merged the two teams together, which led to some hilarity within the cockpits. Both teams receive an abundance of auxiliary mecha that typically replace the arms or give them additional weapons. At least initially, as eventually the auxiliary mecha goes to the Lupin Rangers and not the Pot Rangers. There is a tank loop on piece that gives a group a new mech body to utilize. Loop on red acquires a specialized gun late into the show, which has a robot mode. Lupin Magnum doesn't do too much, still, I like its overall design. It helps that Magnum has a nice debut. Noelle's mecha is train-based, which can flip forms depending on which persona Noelle is undertaking at the time of battle. Like X himself, the attacks vary between melee and long range depending on whether he is in gold form or silver form. X train can also merge with both the dial fighters and trigger machines to form the ultimate combination of them all. Good, cool, Kaiser, VSX is a CGI combination, and yet it ends up working in the show's favor thanks to its quick movements. It never looks truly out of place, even though you can tell it is CGI. <laughs> The effects and music. For all of its faults, if there is one area Lupin excels at, it is in its effects and music. I highly praise Q-Ranger when it would do a quick fight scene in first person perspective. Lupot continues to provide us with some excellent camera work using a drone that allows us to view a fight from an aerial angle. This drone also knows how to get close to the action to move around it, providing us with some utterly amazing fight sequences. <laughs> This is easily when Lupot is at its finest. Fight choreography is solid and I can't help but love the lighting at times, such as the spotlight sequences for the Lupin Rangers. While there are some dodgy CGI sequences, it is interesting to see what the show pulls off despite them. <laughs> 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 
and again we get some really solid camera angles even during those mech fights. <laughs> The music is equally fitting the show with its noir-esque score that is full of energy. This should come to no surprise, however, given it was helmed by Hiroshi Takaki, who gave us the music for Ranger, Shinkinger, and currently Kamen Rider Gachar. There are a plethora of outstanding tracks. ガワイ私のお宝さ。In a turn of rare events, Lupin Ranger vs. Pot Ranger is the first Sentai series to not have an ending theme, which was quite weird at the time. On the other hand, it does have a banger of an opening song, which is two separate songs merged into one. We've got Lupin Ranger, Daiwa Mawasa, which is the Lupin Ranger's theme performed by Project R's Tatsuhiko Yoshida. Alternatively, Hatomi Yoshida sings their Pot Ranger's theme, Chase You Up, Pot Ranger. Mashing these two together to form one song was hands down the most brilliant decision Toei ever made with this show. It works so well together and creates one fantastic blend. Although, having the songs be separate does reinforce the idea that the show originally intended to feature each team on separate episodes. Fun fact, Hitomi Yoshida was the lead girl in the Die Ranger movie. <laughs> the episodes. Lupot has a couple of really outstanding episodes and quite a few stinkers, but overall it's just a uh, meh kind of series. The ending is quite anticlimactic and feels as safe as can be just so Toei can continue to make sequel movies. I'm also not a fan of how they ended Dagranio's story. It's a shame because Lupot held a lot of potential. The first 10 episodes were pretty damn strong to the point where it started to feel like the best Sentai show since Gokaiger. Leave it to Toei to mess them up in the early teens with nearly nothing happening until they reach the 40s. And that may be the worst crime of all. The show is just kind of boring to watch. It's not awful. It's it's just not good either. It exists. The worst episode of the series is without a doubt one of the worst episodes in Sentai history. It can give the pregnancy episode from Live Man a run for its money. That episode is The Show Must Go On. This episode features a film crew trying to make a documentary on the Pot Rangers. <laughs> Mm, no, this show is not actually about you. It's about the Lupin Rangers and your guest stars in their show. Anyway, the Pot Rangers are filming their story when all hell breaks loose and a monster by the name of Pitchcock reverses their genders. Ooh. <gasps> I was not a fan of this episode when it initially aired, and now it seems even worse given how insensitive it is to modern society. Huh? 
Oh my god. It is so embarrassing. Huh? Oh. Oh. My favorite episode of the series is a bit tough, not because there were so many I love, rather just trying to figure out which episodes I found to be slightly better than others. I kind of dig the fifth episode for its awesome battle between Patrin 1 and Lupin Red. <laughs> Plus, the Gangler of the Week was played by Tadashi Mizuno, who was the only character I kind of liked in Ultraman Trigger. <laughs> However, I think it is the two-parter, episodes 43 and 44, that I'm going to go with here, which are titled He's Come Back and The Truth Revealed. This pair introduces us to Sakiya's predecessor, who has returned from France to do a gangler spy being a part of the police force. He suspects Noel to be the one, and a lot of great action scenes occur both in and out of costume. <laughs> There's also some good drama happening, as we come to learn there is a tragic secret behind the Gangler's human forms. <laughs> the movies. I would say I'm thrilled that Lupot only had two movies for me to talk about. But one of them has Lucky in it which was a nightmare in itself. Oh my god. Just let me get this out of the way now. The Lupin Ranger versus Potch Ranger versus Q Ranger movie sucks. Not even two minutes in, and these are the first words we hear out of Lucky. Apparently, some remnants of Darna Marge's group decide to multiverse hop and found themselves in the Lupot one. The Lupin Rangers pretend to get kidnapped and have their kidnappers demand a ransom for their return. <laughs> Lucky gets locked up. <laughs> We learn the truth behind Donna Marge's name. That doesn't make sense. I mean, it does, but not the way it's actually spelled. At least Sakio's face there is pretty funny. There is some spectacular camera work. <laughs> Finally, during the climactic battle, Jewel the World shows up out of the blue for reasons. And then leaves before doing anything. Right. Oh, and as with the show itself, only half of the Q Ranger cast receives screen time, while the other half is relegated to the battle at the end. Oh, and our movie ends with the Q Ranger theme for Loop Hot. But damn, that theme is still kind of catchy. It's a mess of a movie that has Lucky spouting his favorite catchphrase way too much. <laughs> Oh my god. <laughs> Why? Why?
Thankfully, the summer movie fares a bit better, though that really ain't saying much. This film kicks off with Herlock Sholmes arriving in Japan looking for gangler threats. <laughs> What I find interesting about this is back when LeBlanc was writing the Lupin novels, Sherlock Holmes was featured in one story. Conan Doyle's estate sued him, so he changed the character's name to Herlock Sholmes. With that in mind, the story of the film is pretty basic and by the numbers, but it does have some impressive cinematography, especially in the Gangler's Mansion. Take it. Get both. Chaka. 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 As to be expected, a movie exclusive Max shows up, which is thanks to the goody clone Jackpot Striker. Jackpot can combine with the Pot Ranger and Lupin Ranger Max because, of course, he can. <laughs> Lupin Ranger vs. Pot Ranger was a series that had so much potential and it squandered all of it. As such, I am giving it a mediocre average 3 out of 5 grown ups in spandex. It's not exactly a terrible show, it just doesn't live up to its potential, which is ultimately the biggest disappointment. The rumors about it were far more interesting than the show we actually got. Still, I do say it is worth at least a one-time watch by every Sentai fan. With that said, Merry Christmas everyone and enjoy your chicken. I mean, turkey. Turkey, why, why would you eat chicken? Uh, whatever, bye. Oh, I'm not the one. Oh, shit, go! Samo, Christmas,